530, so we'll call to order this meeting for Monday, December 4th. Jordan, would you start us off with the roll call, please? Please respond by stating present. Council Member Ronane. Present. Boberg. Present. Liebelt. Present. Reif. Present. Johnson. Uh, Reinbold. Present. Langer. Present. Norvstrup. Present. Mayor Shoneman. Present. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Finance Director Jordan Quillen has informed me that we've got two additions to this agenda. One is a license for a water and sewer contractor. Another is an uh, adjustment to speak about our economic development efforts and position. And so then we also have a correct agenda item with no amendment necessary that we had apparently talked about a little bit uh, changing, but now we're not going to. So. I would take a motion to approve this week's agenda with those two addendums. Move to approve with the additions and corrections. Second. Got a motion, Councilman Ronane. Second, Councilman Ryan Bold. Any uh, discussion on that? All right, then all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. Motion carries. We've got approval of minutes for two meetings, the first of which was our work session, which occurred on November 27th at 4.30 p.m. And then immediately following, we had our regular city council meeting at 5.30. We will be voting to approve on the minutes of both of those two, um, those two meetings. Move to approve the minutes. Second. Motion, Ryan Bold, second. Norvstrup, anyone have anything on any of those? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Chief, anyone signed up to speak at open forum? I thought I'd taken a look. Hearing no one is here to speak at open forum, we'll move along to our consent calendar where we have uh, two items, a license for master plumber and then the addition, which we had uh, discussed a moment ago, a water and sewer contractor as well. Take a motion to approve this week's consent calendar with those two items. Move to approve. Second. We've got a motion, Councilwoman Liebelt, and the second, Councilman Reif. Anything from the council on either or both of these? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next, we've got our old business single item possible approval of a second reading and final adoption of the ordinance 231101 which uh, sets salaries and wages of city employees and officials for 2024 I don't believe we've had uh, any changes to that um, Jordan anything uh, thank you mayor there are no changes since first reading move to approve second Got a motion from Councilman Renane and a second from Councilman Ryan Bold. Anything from the council on any of these items? All right. All, all right, excuse me, I'll need a roll call vote on that one. Jordan. Council Member Ronane. Aye. Boberg. Aye. Liebelt. Aye. Reif. Aye. Ryan Bold. Aye. Langer. Aye. Norbstrup. Aye. Mayor Shoneman. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we've got our new business segment of our meeting. We've got a series of public hearing and approvals of transfer of a variety of liquor licenses and malt beverage licenses. The first of which is our on-off sale malt beverage and South Dakota wine license from Grand Casino. Doing business as Deuces Wild to itself at a different location. It's moving from 915 6th Avenue Southeast to 1812 6th Avenue Southeast, suite number five does require a uh, transfer of that license as a result I would uh, looks like no one's here to speak on behalf of that license holder I would take a motion from the council move to approve second motion right second Ryan bold anyone from the council have anything before we vote on this one I have a question go ahead David um it could apply to ABC and B um, how many 
video lottery machines can a malt beverage license holder have? Ron, can you help us out with that one? Um, um, a licensed malt beverage holder can have 10 machines with that, at that one establishment. If it's an approved uh, one by the city of Aberdeen if for, a, for a malt beverage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Councilman. How many total licenses do we have that are malt beverage licenses? I don't know that. How many, oh, how many malt beverage licenses with, with uh, video lottery? Yeah. 35 is the max that we can have. And we do have, we are maxed. So we have the 35 malt beverage licenses with lottery with plus lottery. the 30 plus however many liquor. Plus each liquor license can, can also have video lottery machines, so, yep. And how many for each license, Ron? 10. 10 for each of the liquor licenses video lottery well. machines for each license, yep. Whether it's malt beverage or liquor. And that does not apply to those food majority liquor licenses that we've been issuing. It would to the restaurant. Yes, they also can can get uh, uh, video lottery machines. With the, With the limited restaurant license. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Any other questions <clears throat> as it relates to this first transfer? Jordan, would you give us a roll call vote, please? Council Member Norbstrup. Aye. Langer. Aye. Reinbold. Aye. Reif. Aye. Liebelt. Aye. Foberg. Aye. Ronan. Aye. Mayor Sonneman. Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got a very similar item. We've got a public hearing and possible approval of a transfer of retail on off malt beverage and wine from Royal Casino DBA Four Aces Casino which is located at 202 6th Avenue Southeast Suite B, which will be moving to 1812 6th Avenue Southeast Suite 4. Take a motion from the council. I'll move it. Second. Got a motion from Councilman Ronane and a second from Councilman Reinbold. I'm assuming that we probably covered the questions that we've got since these are virtually copy and paste but if someone does have something pipe up, otherwise we'll do voice votes on the remainder for the sake of time. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed nay. Motion carries. Next, we've got the transfer of a malt beverage and wine from Grand Casino, doing business as Grand Casino, located at 913 6th Avenue Southeast, moving also to 1812 6th Avenue Southeast Suite 2. Take a motion on this one. Move to approve. Second. Motion Reinbold, second Ronane. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Next, we've got Royal Casino doing business as Royal Casino, or Royale Casino. A little fancier, that one. <laughs> at 202 6th <laughs> Avenue Southeast to Royal Casino doing business as Royal Casino at 1812 6th Avenue. Southeast Suite 2, and it does occur to me that perhaps that's a typographical <laughs> error. I kind of hope it's not. <laughs> for the sake of uh, being correct, I assume it's probably Royal Casino doing businesses, Royal Casino. I would take a motion on that one. Move to approve. Second. Motion Liebelt. Second. Reinbold. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion mm -hmm. carries. And finally, Lastly, on this series of transfers, we've got on-off sale package liquor license, which is uh, from Eagle River LLC, which does business as Street Corner Urban Market slash Mulligans, currently located at 715 10th Street North, which will also change and move to Legends Liquor, LLC DBA Legends Liquor, also located <coughs> at 1812 6th Avenue Southeast and that will be in suite six mm -hmm. of that facility. Moved. Second. Motion Ronane, second. Lee Belt, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. <coughs> Moving on to other business, we've got a public hearing and possible approval of a first reading of ordinance 231103, which rezones properties described as lot one third overpass subdivision 
um, which is located at 115 Second Avenue Northwest and <clears throat> 114 124 First Avenue Northwest from C2 and I1, which is commercial highway and unrestricted <coughs> industrial to strictly highway commercial C2. Ken, what can you tell us about that? Thank you, Mayor. The applicant is requesting this petition to rezone in order to eliminate the split zoning that was created by a replat of the property into one parcel. Staff have reviewed this petition and to rezone and concur with its approval. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion from Councilman Ryan Bolton, a second from Councilman Norbstrup. Any questions for the Planning and Zoning Director on this one? All right. Jordan, would you give us a roll call vote, please? Council Member Ronane? Aye. Foberg? Aye. Liebelt? Aye. Reif? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Norbstrup? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. And as you noticed, I referred to Ken as a planning and zoning director. This next one will, I guess, take care of that. Uh, <laughs> moving forward, we've got a possible first reading in Ordinance 231201, which amends our city code to make planning and zoning synonymous with community development. We did have an action earlier about the title itself. Now we are making that, uh, I guess, kosher throughout the rest of the city's code. Ron, what can you tell us about that adjustment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and Ken, you can weigh in whenever you want on this, but um, in the process of, of hiring a new, a new uh, community development director, a new planning and zoning director, um, I was tasked to look at to, to see what needs to be done to be able to make those changes. Um, the idea with uh, using the phrase community development as synonymous with planning and zoning uh, is just an effort to better capture, better better describe what it is that the community uh, government is trying to do with with its growth and uh, with the overall functioning of the of the municipality. So, um, after reviewing the the code, um, I don't know if the council will recall, but we did a reconification of the Aberdeen City Code uh, three years ago, roughly. We wouldn't be up for another recodification for approximately six to seven years. And so rather than go through and actually change all of those uh, sections that would be impacted by this language, we've gone with another route. And I actually ran this past the Muni Code folks who publish our ordinances to see if they uh, had any issues with this kind of a process. They, they did not. But the ordinance uh, puts in place a new provision at section 1-2, a new definition at 1-2, uh, just saying that the terms planning and zoning shall be synonymous with the terms community development. And then it, it attempted throughout chapter 60 to identify those areas that the language would be synonymous with. And so what we've done here is, uh, is a fix for now, and then when we do a recodification, we will we can make those changes so that they appear actually within the code um, but again the idea is to to use language that um, will resonate more with the public in dealing with our various uh, zoning code enforcement those kinds of functions and again if you're if you wanted to add anything you sure can but that's that's what we've done these um, planning a commission also had similar had some questions about this we were able to uh, go through this same rundown with them and they recommend approval of this ordinance I'll move to approve but I do have a question what's there Second. a cav caveat what did you say I do have a question that I if oh, we sure. get it on for a discussion. We've got a motion from Councilman Rene and second from Councilman Norfolk and your question, <coughs> Councilman Rene. So, so I'm curious, Ron, when you say you talk to the mini code people, so if I look at the code after this is adopted, it'll still have references to zoning inspector and so on and so forth. It's just that someplace in the code there will be a cross-reference that hopefully readers will so locate. Prime, that's correct. When you look, okay. when you look in the code, None of the language will change. The only change will be in section 1 2, but it'll allow us internally to start saying community development. 
I appreciate it. I mean, this is a, when we started talking about that, I was thinking just the cost of publishing this, if we were going to publish every uh, section that, that essentially gets amended by this, it would be craziness. Uh, and so I think this is a nice, inexpensive way to accomplish that. Good work. And so, Ron, the page and a half that we see in our packets, that pretty much uh, includes all the references therein. I, I had my legal assistant go through and, um, and painstakingly identify everyone and then look at the context to see if that would be language where we're looking, where we'd want to use community development. And so that's what you see in that table at paragraph two of the ordinance. Thank you, Ron. Any other questions from the council? Okay, as this is an ordinance, I'm going to require a uh, roll call vote. Jordan, would you give that to us now? Council Member Norvstrup? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Reif? Aye. Liebelt? Aye. Foberg? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Mayor Shongman? Aye. Motion carries. Well, I would say that it was relatively painless as far as it goes, so. Moving right along to our possible first reading of an ordinance 230, or excuse me, 231203, which regards emergency snow removal at public parking lots. And here to talk a little bit about that is Public Works Director Stu Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, in our quest to continue to improve our snow removal operations, uh, just looking at how things go together, uh, we've felt that this change would be um, a way to uh, improve the service that we give to the, the downtown area. So this is this affects parking lots in the zone one um, snow removal district, which is, uh, like I said, downtown. So what this does is instead of having the snow, the official snow removal for these lots being the second evening of snow removal, we're going to move it to the basically the very first part of the snow removal process. So um, in other words, you know, at the time that we start to gear up to go out and do the north-south streets in zone two and stuff, this will be before that. Um, so we'll be able to go in, get these lots completely cleaned out, hauled away, and then um, the guys can go on to their, their, the rest of their duties. But that way, once it's done, it's done. People can park in those lots and uh, basically get off the streets for when we do our downtown snow removal then that, that next evening. So, And Stu, the way that the process currently works <clears throat> is they do it a preliminary pass-through with smaller equipment around right. the parked cars, and then they come back and clean it up at it the next night. Yep. So that, that first evening that we do or, or overnight when we do downtown snow removal they'll they'll come in quickly um, push snow up in the parking lots and places that we hope isn't in people's way and then come back the following night and and clean it up so by doing it this way we'll just kind of it'll it'll be maybe a little bit of an inconvenience initially for the the folks that use those parking lots but then once it's done it's done and they they don't have to worry about it anymore <laughs> after that I will add, this is way more efficient than how we've done it in the past, and um, we always had to double the effort going back because we were always going back that second time. So this will definitely save one step along the process and probably clarify it. At least those people that use those lots will have a better idea when they can and can't be in there and not have to interpret things based on the condition of things around their car. And so the... It's generally done with uh, payloaders and uh, and skid steers. Correct. And they haul that stuff out by pushing them into big piles and yep. then moving them out. Are, what are those operators doing for the remainder of the snow removal process? So those those crews are typically the ones that are going to go out and start clearing cul-de-sacs after after they get done with the parking lots. Good. Good to have that efficiency moving in. Does anyone from the council have any questions for Public Works Director on this one? All right, Jordan? I'll move to approve it. Oh, Second. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Got a motion from Councilman Renane. Second, Councilman Reinbold. Now, Jordan, would you give us a roll call vote, please? 
Council Member Ronane. Aye. Foberg. Aye. Weebelt. Aye. Rafe. Aye. Reinbold. Aye. Langer. Aye. Norbstrup. Aye. Mayor Shoneman. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we've got a possible first reading of a resolution which accepts the dedication <coughs> of certain public improvements in the refuge retreats subdivision. Also, Stu, you'll be carrying this one. What can you talk about this uh, dedication? So um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Refuge Retreats subdivision. Um, it's a 55-plus community uh, east of Kettering and south of 8th Avenue Northeast. And uh, this is kind of the culmination of the development of that, um, that subdivision in that we're accepting all the improvements that have been installed in, in that subdivision. In other words, our, the streets, the curb and gutter, the uh, water, sewer, storm sewer uh, systems are um, all, all uh, being taken over by the city now at this point. Move to approve. Second. I've got a motion from Councilman Reif and a second from Councilman Reinbold. I noticed you mentioned the storm drains in particular. They're up to snuff and in good shape. Yes, but not the uh, not, not the holding ponds themselves. Exactly, is that the way that we've done the rest of those? Um, this this is a kind of a unique development in that um, the the uh, density of housing units in this in this subdivision um, really made it challenging to uh, find storage for the stormwater. So the developer came up with a plan to use. Um, Kind of the lots adjacent to the to the structures as the place to uh, to catch the stormwater. So um, there are you know five or six holding ponds kind of scattered throughout the whole development, and uh, because those um, ponds are are you know in such close proximity to the to the structures, um, we felt it would be best that those would be maintained by the development. Um, they can um, provide service that's maybe a little bit better than what we could as far as mowing and maintaining those. So we thought that was probably the best way to approach that. And if I could add, you'll see, uh, Council, <coughs> have a, we have adopted a more formal process for this. And for, for, for future dedications, we'll, we'll try to be as formal and and the it was important to to make sure that it was clear in this acceptance that the stormwater uh, essentially the, the retention ponds would not be part of the dedication would not be part of the acceptance so what will eventually happen is when this if this is approved um, eventually it'll be recorded with the register of deeds against every one of these lots so they're aware that um, so the owners, future owners, would be aware that the city has not <coughs> accepted the stormwater retention ponds. Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Councilman. Can I, can <coughs> Stu? Can you give us a just an overview of when a development like this goes up? What do they give the city? What do they give you in terms of how this is how this infrastructure is going to work? What level of detail do you dive into to make sure that do you have to approve? Like their exact plans for engineering and then do you review those exact plans to see if they carried them out the way they said they were going to or how does it work that's you yeah you're you're pretty cor close to correct on that so what happens is <clears throat> uh, a um, consulting engineer will come up with plans they'll submit those to the engineering department for review if we have any comments we'll pass those back on to the uh, consultant um, we leave the construction inspection and that stuff up to the consultant and the developer once the uh, improvements have been completed we will receive a, a letter from the consulting engineer stating that those improvements were constructed to the standards that were set forth in the plans and specs and then <clears throat> that starts a one-year warranty period from that point um, and then after that warranty period is complete, then that's when um, the developers would petition us to accept these improvements, which is what we're doing here tonight for this particular subdivision. Mr. Mayor. So then do you, 
physically go out there and with yes the in this case I, I in this case I did actually go out there with them we don't always do that mm -hmm. um, we we typically we feel that if um, a registered engineer is certifying to us that the plans or the the improvements were made according to the plans that that they very well should be okay thanks thank you councilman good points i think across the board hopefully that will alleviate any potential future concerns on these type of issues anyone else from the council have any questions or <coughs> thoughts on this uh Mr. Mayor, transfer? One more. go ahead councilman if a neighbor of a develop of a new development like this, since we have more developments going up in town, has questions, at what point in the process about the engineering? At what point in the process should they be asking those questions, and, and to whom? I, ideally, if a, if there's a concern over what's happening in a subdivision, they should probably reach out to the engineering department um, as early on in the process as possible, because once improvements are in the ground. Uh, pretty difficult to make changes at that point. Thank you. Councilman, can you give us an example of a concern that that someone might have? I'm curious to... Uh... Oh, on the, on the outskirts, not inside the development, but outside of the development. So you're a neighbor and you used to be next to a field and now there's a whole housing development in that field. Um, that's obviously how developments are going to happen in Aberdeen. So what if their drainage plan is now affecting your yard you know what if they're the drainage plan from this and Stu can you talk a little bit to that because that's a great point is there is there that uh, presumably that's something that gets taken into account so in those cases yes if you um, you you can't um, well it, it kind of works both ways when when you're talking about drainage um, the improvements can't negatively affect um, other people's um, use of their property but also um, you know there there is a, a reasonable right to expect that um, that a person developing a property is able to use that property um, for the use that it was zoned for intended um, in this case I think there's um, there may or may not be a, a, a significant difference in how the land is behind um, behind the houses on Kettering Drive. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're referring to. Um, and it, you know we've we've been and we have been talking to the uh, the consulting engineer about this to to make sure that that things were constructed in the manner that they were that they appeared in the plans right thank you for doing that sure any other questions from the council <laughs> all right uh, uh, since this is a resolution i can take a voice vote on this one no fine <laughs> jordan would you give us a uh, roll call vote please council member nordstrup hi langer Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Reif? Aye. Weebelt? Aye. Foberg? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion. That's carried. Next, we've got the possible approval of a payment, title number six, in the amount of $18,542.80 to B&B Contracting for the <laughs> Klein Street Storm Sewer Improvements in their work on that project. Stu, what can you tell us about the payment uh, expectations here? Thank you, Barrett. So this is just to release retainage on this project. Um, the contractor just recently completed all the uh, warranty work that needed to be done here, and um, the project's completely done. And so we're just going to release the retainage with this. Move to approve. Second. I've got a motion from Councilman Ryan Bolden, a second from Councilman Nordstrup. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Nelson on this one? Jordan? Councilmember Ronane? Aye. Foberg? Aye. Weebelt? Aye. Wright? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Nordstrup? Aye. Mayor Sonneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Moving along, we've got a possible approval of a payment titled number six in the amount of $166,624.67, as well as an accompanying change order 
which totals 143,555 and 58 cents also to BNB contracting for their work on their South Dakota Street roadway improvement projects. Stu, what can you tell us about <coughs> these payments and change orders? So first of all, I should point out that this is actually a pay request for Reedy construction. I got a little uh, crazy with my cut and paste, so um, so that should read Reedy's. But the the pay request is for primarily for the traffic <coughs> signal work that was done. Um, I think a little bit of uh, uh, gravel base course and a few other things. Um, we're just simply with the change order just updating um, the actual quantities installed in the field in this case and then I think there was a few extra fittings when we did the 16 inch water main in in uh, First Avenue that we had to add so that's kind of the majority of what's in that change order move to pay reconstruction Second. got a motion from Councilman Reinbold and a second from Councilman Norstrup and with the correction B and B will be changed to Reedy construction in this case. Um, any questions as it relates to uh, to these two payments? Stu, before we move on from this one, how about that light that we've got on third? It's still not operational, is that correct? So yes, I reached out to uh, Ringenberg Electric, who is the subcontractor doing the electrical on this project, and uh, he showed me a, an email that he had gotten from the supplier that said they were shipping the controller this week. So it'll be shipped to the supplier. They have to do some configuration work, and then they'll turn around and, and ship it to us. So I would hope that it would be by next week sometime. But uh, And that's... That single part has essentially been the holdup for this. Yes, uh, uh, that's we've just been waiting for this to show up from the uh, from the actual distributor of this of the stuff. So, all right, so we've got our motion. We've got our second. Since we've you know, uh, no additional commentary, why don't you, Jordan, go ahead and give us a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Norbstrup. Hi. Langer. <coughs> Councilmember Langer. Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Wright? Aye. Liebelt? Aye. Fobert? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? <clears throat> Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got a possible approval of a proposal and agreement to upgrade the legacy PLC SCADA system for the Aberdeen Waterworks. Stu, you're busy here tonight. What can you tell mm -hmm. us about that uh, proposal? So I also have uh, Janelle Ellingson here from the water plants. She can <clears throat> help me um, answer some questions if need be. So this is a uh, the result of a um, some professional services that we contracted out. We had a, a vendor come in and, and make recommendations on what we needed to do with our um, SCADA system. So this is the, the equipment that helps all the little pieces, individual pieces of the water plant communicate and um, so that the uh, operators can see what's going on in the plant at any one given time and the system was installed in chunks and pieces from the mid 1990s through our uh, when we did our big uh, water plant improvement project back in 2006 and really have we've had no updates to the system since then so we had originally envisioned this or um, I, I think that the the original vision was that this would be something that we do over the course of say three or four years and just pick off the, the worst pieces first. But as we did the analysis, it became pretty apparent that um, we're, we were kind of on borrowed time there. So I, the, we feel like the best uh, way forward here is to just completely start over and mm. Um, we we have some stuff that was installed in the mid '90s that you cannot get parts for anymore, um, and a lot of the other stuff that you still can get parts for, it's really no longer supported. The operating systems and stuff are, are pretty archaic, so I think this will be a, a good first step in in uh, kind of getting the the plant functioning very smoothly. I think one other thing to note is that. This particular project, while being done in phases, would have cost you similar money just done over time 
So you're, you're looking at similar amounts of money, just that this is going to be a one shot versus being done over the course of a couple, two, three years. Where did the money come from? Trees? It, it comes from the, uh, the Water Enterprise Fund. So it's, it's money that's there, it's available to be used. So um, we have, we had 200,000 budgeted for this. There is an additional uh, 400,000 that was budgeted for another project that um, I think operationally it was decided earlier this year that that did not need to be performed. So really the additional funds that we need are 100 and 8,000. Yeah. So when I'm taking a look at this, we've got the hardware expense of 330,000, the engineering cost of 370,000. Is that pretty typical with this kind of a thing that the Yeah, so this this is a question we asked too. Um, this is when they say engineering, it really maybe probably be more appropriate to say programming. Um, there's a it's it's a pretty intensive process to uh, to program each one of these individual because they they just come they're they're you know, kind of a dumb piece of equipment, then they have to, you know, install the, the programming, programming in each individual component so that it gives it the ability to understand what it's monitoring and then communicate with the rest of the system, so. And for those of the, in the audience that aren't familiar with PLC and SCADA, could you just give us a basic rundown? So, uh, PLCs are are programmable logic controls. That would be the part of the of the apparatus that's actually um, controlling how a particular uh, piece of equipment functions. The SCADA system is, and I don't remember exactly what SCADA stands for. Supervisory control of data acquisition. I'll leave it to another engineer to know that. <laughs> Um, that's the part that allows the pieces, the individual pieces, to talk to each other and to communicate to the operators what's happening. Go ahead, Josh. And just so I'm clear, this was originally budgeted for three years, but we're doing it all in one shot, and yes. there was another 400000 expense that we no longer think we need to make this year? Correct. Okay. And so the 200000 was only for a small phase of this? Yes, very small, point. yep. All right, any questions <coughs> for... City and actually, we take a motion on this before we get too carried away. I move to approve. Second. Motion, Councilman Reif. Second, Councilwoman Fulberg. Does anyone have any questions for Stu or for Janelle in the back? Graciously made her way to our meeting to uh, run through any particulars. I think we should try to stump her, but I don't think <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Ask her what SCADA stands for. Maybe she can take, <laughs> take it down. I really want a lime shaker. <laughs> for $19,000. All right. Um, so if there's no further questions or comments from the council, I'm going to go ahead and kick things over to Jordan for a roll call vote. Council Member Ronane. Aye. Boberg. Aye. Weebelt. Aye. Reif. Aye. Reinbold. Aye. Langer. Aye. Dorfstrup. Aye. Mayor Shahneman. Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the possible approval of the final payment, which is number two in the amount of $11,338.40 to CDJ Electric <coughs> Plumbing and Heating for the City Hall Chiller Replacement. Stu, you've also got that one, and that's your final one for the evening. What have you got? Uh, so this, uh, we, we installed this chiller earlier this summer. Um, we had bid it out in 2022, but there was such a long lead time to get the equipment that it took a year almost. October. Yeah. So um, anyway, that it's it was installed in July, and it's been up and running for several months. The, there was a, a uh, punch list that was um, developed, and the contractors worked through all that stuff, and so we're we want to release the retainage and, and close the project out. Move to approve. Second. Motion, <clears throat> Reinbold, second. Ronan, any questions for Stu as it relates to this payment? Jordan? Council Member Norbstrup? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. 
Reif. Aye. Weebelt. Aye. Foberg. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Mayor Shoneman. Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got a possible approval of a payment totaling $90,130 to Stryker for the <clears throat> replacement and rental of our ambulance emergency medical service equipment. And here to talk about that is our Fire Chief, Joel Weig. Joel, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this ALS 360 agreement was entered into in 2022. It allowed us at that time to replace all, all of our major equipment um, in our ambulances the Lucas device, um, our cots, our power loads, and our AEDs. Um, this uh, agreement was uh, scheduled to last 10 years, and this is our first payment. And at uh, years three, four, or five, we have the ability to replace all of our current equipment with new equipment again. And then at year 10, uh, we can need, choose to purchase all the agreement for a dollar or buy new equipment again. I'll move to approve it. Second. Motion from Councilman Ronain. Second from Councilman Reif. Anyone from the council have any questions for the fire chief? Um, all right. Easy enough. Jordan, would you give us a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Ronane. Aye. Foberg. Aye. Weebelt. Aye. Reif. Aye. Reinbold. Aye. Langer. Aye. Norbstrup. Aye. Mayor Shoneman. All right, motion does carry. Thanks for joining us, Joel. Thank you. Next, we've got our a possible approval to authorize the city of Aberdeen to enter into an agreement <laughs> with Condry and Associates to perform a job classification and compensation system study. And we've got Robin here to talk about that. We've also got uh, HR Director Jill in the back. So in um, recent past, we have found that it's, it's been increasingly challenging to retain people and to attract uh, personnel. And in talking with our uh, department heads over the last few months, we have discussed this at length and feel that it's, it's in our best interest right now to figure out what's going on uh, with the system. Uh, with the high rate of inflation recently. Uh, we're not sure we've kept up with what the market's doing. The last one we did was in 2016, which is actually, mm -hmm. I'd like to see these done about every five years mm -hmm. uh, so we don't get too far behind. We thought we were in pretty good shape up until about the last year, and now all of a sudden we really feel like things are, we're getting caught behind the eight ball. So we're recommending approval. This is actually less than what we paid the last time. Uh, we did this. However, there's less on the job classification or job duties. Uh, I think they rewrote all the job descriptions last time, and this time we're not having them go through that. They will just make sure that people are in the right classification as compared to others within that type of work. So we recommend approval. Jill is here. Uh, if you want to ask her any questions regarding her, her challenges. So. I'll move to approve. Second. We've got a motion from Councilman Renee and a second from Councilman Reinbold. And so for my uh, expectation is that they'll just rifle through those different job positions and make recommendations on how much individual positions should be made. That's correct. And that's based on, it's based on what um, they find with other communities and they have tried to implement the private sector in, in some of these studies now too, so that we aren't considering apples and oranges. Uh, the private sector has, has become a big challenger for our positions as well. So. All right, I've got a motion, I've got a second. Any questions from the council? Mr. Ray? Go ahead, council. Is this, is, is it, what's the total cost for this? 39. Well, it's 39.5 for for their study. So do we do an RFP for that? Do we send out like a request for proposals and ask for proposals? I mean, is this an entity that does a lot of city Actually, governance? Actually, that's, that's one of the things. When, when uh, I visited with Jill about this, um, she polled other cities to find out who they were using. And the majority of 
who has been used by communities in the area has been Condry. Condry also did our last couple uh, studies as well. So uh, the same people that have done ours in the past will be involved with us. So it's not a, uh, a learning curve for them. What was approximately the amount that we had paid when they were responsible for ginning up these uh, job position titles and so forth? Uh, in 2016, we paid 49500 so 10000 more than what we'll be paying now. All right, anything else from the council? All right, Jordan? Council Member Norbstrup? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Wright? Aye. Liebelt? Aye. Foberg? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Move along to our additional agenda item here for the evening. And I see that uh, City Manager Robin has copied and pasted some documents. Um, the final page you've all seen in the past, and the first three pages are an attempt to integrate those additional responsibilities into the job listing that was originally created for the economic development manager position here in Aberdeen. And so you'll see it's a hybrid of the of the additional responsibilities, the um, the grade, the uh, rate of employment, and uh, and many of the other things as it relates to the economic development component of things remain the same. However, the um, many of the additional recommendations for work related to public information officer um, have been also included and due to the nature of this position in particular and since it's new and we're kind of trying to start something off on a better foot uh, Robin thought that it would be worthwhile to uh, to have you guys all take a closer look at this and provide input or the like so that uh, you've got an opportunity to voice things as you see fit and hopefully we can get this thing started off properly. Mr. Um, Mayor. Go ahead, David. Uh, how does this process work? Do we approve it tonight and then it gets posted or do we have a second reading? Or? I don't think we need an approval for this since it's a hire that Robin okay. could make. We just okay. thought that it'd be something to kind of air out in front of everyone and make sure that everyone was comfortable with uh, with the scope of it and everything. And we did have a bit of a conversation in a, in a closed session, so we wanted to be sure to bring this out into a public atmosphere so that um, we could record those type of things and be accountable to the uh, the folks in the city I was I was just asking because I wasn't aware of this and that it was gonna be on this agenda until four something so um, I don't know how other people when they found out but the public definitely didn't get a chance to look at it so I think it might be good to give the public a chance to kind of look at this well, I understand what you said Robin can make the decision but if we we truly want some public input and not feel like we're rushing things or looking like we're rushing things it might be good to slow down just a little bit. One of the reasons why we did uh, decide to put it on tonight uh, kind of a last minute thing realizing that next week we don't have a meeting as has set right now uh, we thought at least we should have it for your review so you can have it to look at and, and give some input if there's something that's glaringly different than your expectation. So no action required on this one, but if anyone had any commentary to, uh, to include here tonight, that'd be great. Otherwise, if you'd like to studiously review this thing and see if there's particular tweaks that we could provide. And then I think that it's also something that obviously we'd be putting on our own city's website for the public to review as well um, as it's listed. Um, anyone else from the council have anything? I feel like we covered some good points this last time. Does anyone feel like rehashing any of those comments from before? I'll, I'll s if I can. Go ahead, David. Sorry. I've said this before, and on the third page, it talks about, like, the first point is recruitment of efforts for retail businesses. And I, I just 
um, I've said this before, and I think you all are aware of it, but I want to remind that I just don't want it to focus only on retail because some people define retail differently too, as I've found out in this process. So I'll sure. just say that and I'll leave yeah, it Yeah, I appreciate that, David. And one of the things I think, you know, the kind of driver, we need the cooperation of our development corporation. We want to be sure that those guys feel like this thing is above board and something that they can be on board with and cooperative with. And so it's going to be important that they feel like this isn't treading on their territory. And uh, it can be kind of a collaborative effort, which is everybody's intent, I think, on this thing from the beginning. So I'm hoping that uh, that we can capture that spirit of cooperative cooperation. And if that's, uh, you know, something that we can further define within this, the bigger thing is just mostly making sure that they understand that we're not trying to tread on their territory and that we're trying to do work alongside them. All right, if there's no further comment on that, we will move along to our... Re oh, go ahead. I was just going to say thank you, oh, Mr. Welcome. Mayor, for putting this together and for taking a lot of different feedback and finding a way forward. I appreciate the work you put onto it. Well, thank you. I appreciate you acknowledging that. We've got a review and approval of our claims and payroll, the approval of this week's bills, December 4th, of course. The pay period, however, is November 19th through December 2nd, as well as all the ancillary costs involved in paying, uh, paying waged employees. So I would take a motion to approve these two uh, expense items. Move to approve these two expense items. And a second, if someone was so inclined. Second. Got a motion, Councilman Liebelt. Second, Councilman Reif. Any uh, commentary on any of these uh, bills that we've got listed in our packets here tonight? All right, Jordan, would you give us a roll call vote, please? Council Member Ronane. <laughs> uh, I vote aye on all payment of all the uh, bills except uh, those to Plains <coughs> Commerce Bank, Dave Shoemaker, and Neil Bellica, on which I abstain. Councilmember Fulberg. I vote I accept I stain on the payment to Dakota Bank. Councilmember Liebelt. I vote I on everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. I. Did you read it over carefully though? <laughs> Actually she did. Yes, she I prints did. it and reads it off. All right. Good. Councilmember Reinbold. Aye. Langer. Aye. Norbstrup. Aye. Mayor Shoneman. Aye. Motion does carry. <clears throat> Next, we've got our city manager's report, and Robin, what have you got for us here this evening? One thing you'll notice on job descriptions uh, for the last few years now has been that uh, there is discretion by the city manager to determine whether or not they will allow somebody to live outside the 15-mile radius. Uh, that's been kind of a, a common thing. Uh, there again, we talk as department heads, and we've, we've come to the conclusion that, and, and actually Jill did a polling of other communities to see who actually has a restriction on distance. And as department heads, we've kind of determined that it probably makes more sense uh, to base it on what their job duties are. If they're on call and they need a certain response time, you can't have them living in Redfield, as, a, as an example. So we're, uh, we're going to recommend, and they recommended to me that we just remove that provision and that as those people are being uh, interviewed, that we make sure that their distance from town is appropriate with their job duties. So that was, that was something that I thought uh, you folks would need to know because on this job description that you looked at tonight, it does say... They have to be within 15 miles. For department heads, that hasn't been determined yet, you know, whether we want to pull that provision away. But mm. for everybody other than the department heads right now, we'll take that provision away. If that's, I, I, I don't know that there's a lot to debate on it. We, it. The discretion was still left up to the city manager anyway. So, Robin, just to clarify, city department heads must live within the confines of the boundaries of the city right now yes and that's something that you're weighing well in on? that's something I'll I'll talk with you about in the future to, to determine how you'd like to proceed with that but we felt for the general employee that we don't need to have that provision there and that that discretion should be kind of left up to 
department head how far they should live. Sure. I think that's a great move, and I know that you and I have talked about a couple in particular, but I have also been uh, reminded of a few different potential bus drivers that uh, that kind of were excluded, and that's a really difficult one because mm -hmm. those guys are very, very difficult to come by in this day and age. So I applaud that effort. Nice work. Anyone else from the uh, the council have anything before we take a vote to adjourn this meeting? Well, I've got two more things. Oh, they said you have one. <laughs> All right, two one more. thing at a time. Sorry. Uh, just wanted to find out your, your thoughts on a meeting for December 26th and January 2nd. What are your thoughts on having meetings? I think Jordan has some thoughts on what he needs as far as uh, completion of bills, ordinances, things of that nature. So do you want to weigh in, Jordan, first? Sure. So I will be coming forward with a uh, an ordinance to supplement the budget to set wage um, to set fees for 2024. We would need a second reading, so I would have them ready for first reading whenever that it, the next meeting is. And uh, I do need a, a third meeting this month. Um, I know that Ken also has some um, concerns regarding flats, and I'll let him speak to that. So the Plats that will be approved on our December 19th meeting um, have a requirement from uh, the, or the the county in order to file them, first and second half taxes have to be paid in full the year they file them. Mm -hmm. If this, if these plats that are approved on the 19th by recommended approval on the 19th by the Planning Commission can't be approved before the end of the year, they will have to pay 2024 first and second half taxes in order to file their plats. So, so, so can need us on the 26th. What's that? So, so we'd need. So they need us on the 26th. Right, but that's only one meeting. Don't these require two? Or plats the plats? just require one. Okay. Yeah. How, does, how has it been handled in the past? <clears throat> so we have not had a, a plat carried over. I oh, I've been how the meeting has been handled in the past. I don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, have, we have skipped, didn't we skip a Christmas meeting? Or I, I tried to get us to skip New Year's <laughs> Eve one year, and I got voted down. <laughs> <laughs> remember that Leafson said, what are you, you can, you can wait to have a drink later. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve. No pushing it. Okay, how does everyone feel about the 26th? They need it's, it. We have to be here. It's Kwanzaa. Mind you, my <laughs> calendar is reminding me. <laughs> All right, so I'd say the 26th ought to work for at least a majority of us. Yeah, if not personally, we can join. Right. All right. How about, and then is there a, a necessity to do the meeting on the second, you were saying as well? Well, it's, it's the same situation. It's a question that, it, um, you know, pro <coughs> probably people don't have as many plans for January 2nd as they would for December 26th, but... It's your call. I don't know that we'll have a super amount, but remember that you don't have typically have a second week meeting. So it would be the 8th, or you could skip the second and do it on the 8th, I guess, is another thought. But Let's do that. You want to skip on the second and meet on the 8th instead? Yes, please. That works for people? I won't be here the 8th. No. But. How about the 2nd? I will be here on the 2nd. I won't be here the 2nd, but. But that's. It's 2 to 1. What do you think? But that's okay. Oh. What's that? I won't be here on the 8th. If but it's I 2 to 1, then we meet the 2nd. Now it's 2 to 2. <laughs> carry on. Charlotte, what have you got? The 2nd is fine, but not the 26th. How about the 8th? 8th, whatever. How about you, Josh? Do you have a preference between the two? No, I think uh, no matter. Where I am, I could join electronically. Tiffany, you're the tiebreaker. Would you rather have a meeting on the 2nd or the 8th? I'm good on either, so you decide. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm good. All right, let's do the 8th. Push it off the holiday weekend. Everyone will enjoy their, uh, their holiday. <coughs> Some people will not be able to make it, but uh, you'll consider that a bonus. All right. And it, well, you had one more item. One more item. So I wanted, uh, I don't know how many people follow the Aberdeen Police Department 
Facebook page, mm -hmm. but uh, there was an announcement made last week, I believe, that they've got a new position that they are putting together and have filled it, and I thought Chief McNeil would uh, do some explanation to for us. Sure, thank you for giving me the opportunity to explain our new position. So we're aware when um, uh, seniors graduate, they often uh, look for technical schools to continue their education, and oftentimes uh, people that want to go into policing may go into a law enforcement program like Lake Area. Lake Area's program is typically two years, so a student will enter that program, program at age 18 or 19, uh, graduate in two years, and uh, normally when they graduate, they're probably at about 20 years old or 20 and a half. State law requires that you're 21 uh, to become a certified police officer. So uh, we started looking at, um, you know, uh, again, recruiting and retaining quality people to our workforce. And uh, we came up with a unique opportunity where we determined that we could create a community service officer position. This would be a non-sworn position that allows us to bring in a quality in individual, somebody that's met all the screening and application requirements, and is somebody that we really uh, think would do a good job on our department, and we train them to specific tasks that don't require a law enforcement certificate. And those things would be uh, traffic, accidents, uh, crash investigations, uh, animal control, uh, traffic control, monitoring school zones, community policing projects, and things like that. So um, by having this position, it allows us to train an employee, find a good employee, and ultimately when this individual, uh, uh, Jared Getty, uh, turns 21, we would move in him into a full-time police officer position. So it's win-win for the department, the community, and uh, we're able to, to bring somebody into our department that we may lose if we wouldn't hire you know if, if a person's not you know if they had six months before we'd allow them to come to the department we may lose them some of their place in the workforce so uh, other departments do this rapid city does it sioux falls and it's kind of an innovative way to find quality people and then train them and bring them into your department so but uh, i would like to give a lot of credit to our human resource director and her staff jill and uh, our city attorney looked into some of this and our city manager. So this is a team effort and, and uh, I'm really happy with this. Uh, and we found a quality individual that will do a great job. And we wanted to announce this to, this to the community so people understood this position. And uh, with that, I'll take any questions. Sounds good. Well, it sounds like a great, a great program and it sounds like it's very needed in this community. So congratulations, Jared. Welcome to the team, and we have a legislator in the crowd, so if you could change the age from 21 to 20, you could uh, prevent <coughs> us from having to do any of this special exception work. And I think we should congratulate Jill, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Way to go, Jill. Way to go, Way Jill. To go, Jill. <laughs> Give her a pat on the back, Casey. Good job. <laughs> All right. Anything else from the council? Well, congratulations to all of you for making this work, and congratulations to Jared, as, as again, that I had already said. Um, pleased to have him on the team. Anything else from the council? Casey, anything from you? Just hanging out. Sweet. All right. I would take a <laughs> motion to, uh, to adjourn this meeting, then. Move to adjourn this meeting. <coughs> Second. Get a motion from Councilwoman Liebelt and a second from Councilman Reinbold. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay. We are adjourned.